You punk know, rock prom. Punk rock prom. Okay. I've, well, I've never been to a punk rock prom. Yeah, it's cool. It's better than going to your regular ass prom. No prom. kidding. When you drink it like that, we should we should call the drink the creeper. The creeper. <laughs> There was like 60 year old white ladies and like 23 year old non binary black femmes hanging yeah. out in a space where it didn't feel weird. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is a show about, uh, this is a show about tenacity, it's about making mistakes, it's about getting knocked down and getting back up again and duking it out. Like, we have lots of friends that tell you about how. Well, I, maybe I'm the only one to have friends that tell you how brilliant they are and that they're self-made whatever, and now they pick them up by their bootstraps and they're headed to the Arctic all by them lonesome, right? But that's just not the case. Everybody falls down, everybody makes mistakes, everybody f***s up when they start something. You know, like, I, I'm, I, I'm positive that, that Tolstoy and Sylvia Plath did not want you to read their first drafts because they were bad news. And we're gonna talk about first drafts. That's what we do on here because I think that's, more inspiring and more helpful to people that want to start their own business, get their idea out into the world, make something worthwhile, make a dent, and they need to know. Like, all of us need to know. We need to be reminded that we're all gonna screw up while we're putting it together. And then we talk about some of the things they did to overcome it. So tonight, we've got Fran from Juke Juke Creative. It's a creative agency out of Portland, Oregon. And they do all sorts of stuff. Like I wish I could say like, all right, they just make movies or they just do social media stuff or they just do print. They are a creative agency and they focus a lot on small business, uh, nonprofits, small entrepreneurs, people that um, have sort of been bullied around in the marketplace and that's awesome and really cool. It's something I'm passionate about. I can't wait to talk to her more. Let's get going. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, I've got Fran here from Jupe Jupe Creative out of Portland, Oregon. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Tell me more about uh, Jupe Jupe, what, what you do. Yeah, so Jupe Jupe Creative is what I'm calling a radical creative agency in Portland, Oregon, the widest city in America. That's, that's rad, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and also like a talent management agency. So yeah. yeah, it's kind of a lot of things. I'm kind of like a producer at heart, but I mostly have always just done like events. Yeah. Um, I'm like a punk kid, and so always throwing shows and doing, oh. you know, that kind of vibe. Yeah, so I've yeah, yeah. uh, always done it, and I didn't really Sorry. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> Wait, is there money falling Jack, out of my body Jack, right Jack, now? <laughs> right, I love this. Right, like, it's it's a You're it's like, a made dream out of come true. I was like, oh my god, money's happening right now. This is so good. <laughs> yeah. So you do uh, like punk, uh, punk kid. You did shows yeah. and playing that stuff Looking together. Shows, yeah. Punk rock proms. Yeah. Punk know. rock proms. Punk rock prom. Okay. I've, well, I've never been to a punk rock prom. Yeah, it's cool. It's better than going to your regular ass prom. No prom kidding. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, we just, you know, always kind of just trying to bring community together in like yeah. a way that is kind of like, I mean, anybody like me that was that kid yeah. was probably not going to go to their prom. And I ended up, weirdly enough, going to prom, yeah. uh, only my senior prom, and I brought a 15-year-old rollerblader named Brad, which I'm <laughs> not uh, that excited to share, but I just did that on accident Wait, anyway. I love that his name is Brad. I, yeah. I don't know why that makes it better. Because it a is... A 15-year-old rollerblader named Brad. Yeah, I was a senior, yeah. and I'm like taking a 15-year-old to my prom, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Yeah, I mean, I was like hanging out with punk kids and skater kids, you know? Yeah. So like taking a rollerblader to my prom was like not <laughs> cool or ideal at all, but that's what happened, you know? Basically, after coming out of high school, I ended up, my first job out of high school was at Universal Studios, which was across the street, because I went I went to the high school in Orlando, Florida. Wow, okay. So I got my I got my first job there, and mm -hmm. it was doing lights and sound at the horror makeup show. What? I was 17 years old. Wait, what's the horror makeup it's show? Like, in the... It's like, you know, at Universal Studios, they have like... Yeah, like the stunt show. The stunt show and, and all that kind of thing. Have, yeah. But this one is particular for like makeup effects and this kind of thing, and they had like an animatronic, um, what is the movie, where American Werewolf in London? Oh, yeah, yeah, So they yeah, have yeah, like yeah. the animatronic bus that just comes like and it uh, actually and it, does a thing uh, yeah it's just like all this kind of thing <laughs> so I was 17 years old I got that job because I took an, a, a test like an electrical test yeah and I just aced it because I just graduated and uh, you know I got it over dudes that had been working there as stagehands so they were not that helpful or welcoming when I rolled up. Little punk 17 year old coming in. Yeah. yeah. And you know, almost all I'm a woman and I'm a yeah. woman of color, right? right so it's right, all right, the things. Right, right. Like, yeah. um, I got keys, I got a big old ring of keys, I got a walkie talkie. <laughs> I had to take a weapons training class because there was a revolver that shot blanks in the show. What? Yeah. So I was just doing this ridiculous job 
And I kind of never, I just never had anybody take me under their wing. Yeah. Nobody was ever like, oh, you're actually really good at this. You're great at this. They just were like mad at me. You're like or a whatever. threat. Like, it was a threat, kind of thing, right. right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't last very long doing that job because yeah. it was so unwelcoming sure. and it was just really hard. And so it was kind of sad because I really thought like I was going down this road where I could like do theater or I could do concerts. You know, I just really want to be a tech, Stay like a stage yeah, yeah, yeah. person, you know? Um, and that didn't work out. And so after that, you know, was kind of when I started really getting more into like activism in the punk scene and like doing that kind of thing. And I was yeah. doing Food Not Bombs, which is like this organization where you go and oh, get food cool. that can't be sold to like the public, like Bruce Bananas and this kind of day old yeah. day and things like that. Yeah. And I was feeding or making food for the house for houseless folks um, two times a week for like three years. Oh, wow. Um, Where, was this in, in Orlando. Florida? In Orlando. Yeah, in Orlando. Yeah. yeah. So we were doing that. And that was interesting because, you know, you kind of have to learn how to cook in a way with stuff that you might not have. No, yeah, yeah. You, know, like, you don't know. So it's very, it was very Iron Chef improvise. style. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and that ended up leading me to going to culinary school. Oh my God. So I wasn't even expecting to talk about that. So you went from there then to culinary school? Yeah. I think I always had a love for food. My mom's an amazing cook, yeah. you know, home cook. Um, and yeah, it just was like, oh my gosh, I think this is something that I want to do. Of course, my mom does not want this for me. I'm no. like, please pay for me to go to culinary school. It's like, <laughs> no, like I don't want, you know. And then I ended up coming to Portland in like 2000 to move my best friend here at the time yeah. and had food, you know, at a restaurant. And I was like, this salad has hazelnuts and pears and blue cheese on it. And I'm like, my mind's being blown <laughs> go, go because Portland. my salad in Orlando is like shredded cheddar and like two croutons and <laughs> I don't know, some white ass iceberg lettuce, right? Shredded cheddar and like some white and tomatoes iceberg, that are not right. You're totally right. Right? Yeah, and so totally I'm like, right. what is the salad? This is like mind blowing. And yeah. I was like, well, I want to, like, I should move here if I want to go, you know, I went to culinary school, like the food here is amazing. Yeah. So yeah, it was either like, you know, new, move to New York or LA, right? Or Portland, like, or <laughs> I mean, but it was like accessible and yeah. it was punk and it felt underground and it felt like- Still kind of does. And, yeah. yeah. And it's like, felt like the community of people that I kind of wanted yeah. to be around, right? And yeah. because I knew I was like, you know, very creative person. So I ended up moving to Portland and going to Le Cordon Bleu to get my like business oh, hospitality management sure. thing because I knew that, you know, I wouldn't be able to get a, job at a restaurant in like a higher paying position or if I wanted to open my own restaurant I should probably know how to do that part too. Do, yeah. Yeah, so I ended up moving here and going to school for that. Yeah. Lo and behold, my husband who was my boyfriend at the time yeah. Um, got a job at a local screen printing shop, and the guy that owns that shop was famous for making that Mean People Suck sticker. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the smiley face. Mean People Suck sticker? Yeah, that was him. <laughs> it's like we made a lot of yeah. those stickers. <laughs> yeah. At the time, Andy was doing uh, t-shirts and stickers and posters and had like a limited edition toy store also. Yeah. Like was doing that giant robot heyday vibes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was doing a lot of stuff and then eventually he was just started, wanted to sell uh, off the different parts of the of the, of the the business. Yeah. So we kind of got the flat stock part. So then he we opened up the screen printing shop called Seizure Palace in 2007. Seizure Palace? Seizure Palace. Seizure. <laughs> I know. It's a silly name. It's a name That's of- That's great. I mean, I you won't know. forget. Well, it's hard. Well, the thing is it's, like one of those names where like people are like, excuse me? Oh. They think I'm saying Caesar's Palace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like and then I have to spell the word seizure about a yeah. hundred times in a day. <laughs> it's still it's still around, so, yeah. Still going. Yeah, yeah, totally. So twelve years now wow. doing that. And so we do we specialize in flat stock. So we do uh, custom uh, art prints. Uh, record covers sometimes oh. um, and movie posters. So we've been doing that forever. Wow. Which is really awesome and having like a mom and pop type business with my partner and. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. No. I'm surprised we haven't killed each other at this point. Like backing up just a little bit because I'm really fascinated by the trajectory that you took. Yeah. So doing the corn blue, doing this sort of thing. Did you, growing up like with your, your, your family, influences, friends, other people, did they have also this sort of you know, my mom has like a really kind of has like a hustler spirit. And yeah. She just is like a really hard worker and she was a nurse. She would work these 12 hour shifts, you know, but to make extra money, she would like make Thai food and package them up and then sell them to like the nurses and the doctors at the hospital because that they were so sick amazing. of eating oh. the food at the cafeteria. And then when we lived in Chicago, she would go to like the Vietnamese part of town and go to the gold shops there and like hustle, like hustle good prices on gold chains and then, and then bring those and sell those? them at the hospital too. Like my mom was like- Wait, your mom, th this is amazing. Your yeah. mom's selling gold yeah. and Thai food. To nurses and doctors. <laughs> Can you smell what he's doing? I, I smelled it about five minutes ago and I, I was I, like, I was gonna turn around with it. I'd be like, cause you know. Well, I'll, find, I'll find out, Jack, how, how close are you to, uh, to the drinks? Oh, I'm just playing with the garnish. The drinks are ready. Oh, gosh, oh the drinks so are ready. Good. He's just yeah. playing with garnish. It smells so good. All right, so. then, uh, uh, Jack, what are we drinking? 
Oh, well, I have a, a, very, a very lovely drink called Hello Earth, served in a globe with a tree on top. <gasps> I see it now. <laughs> I thought a... it was like a prop, but now I realize I'm going to drink that. Yeah, yeah, there's, oh my God. there's even a straw and stuff. So uh, we've got fresh mandarin juice. Um, San Pellegrino makes a entrant into the spirit world by making an aperitivo. So it's a non-alcoholic version of Campari. Oh, fun. Um, and then you've got uh, Finneman's Tonic, their pink grapefruit with uh, terpenes from uh, House of Cultivar. Oh my gosh. House of Cultivar. This yeah. is gonna be the fanciest drink I've ever Do you know what House of yeah. Cultivar is? I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It sounds Whatever awesome. Whatever it is, I'm buying it. I know. I know. <laughs> like, welcome to the House sure of they Cultivar. Would love to that sounds good. That. Welcome to the House of Cultivar. Non-alcoholic, so low to no ABV. Yeah, get Romsey. But it's fantastic. Oh so underneath here is a uh, brulee mandarin. <gasps> do I get to eat that? Yes, you do. Do I eat it before or after? Oh. Whenever you want. Oh. I don't know what. This is like the fanciest thing I've ever seen in my life. I could not even. Like, where did you even get this, like, alcohol alchemy set for, like, I mean, for once, am I speechless? Uh, uh, like, uh, are we both <laughs> can't talk right like, now? Like, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Keep talking, keep talking. Oh my gosh. Um, all right. What is this? What is this? What's the branch? Uh, that's a little bit of, uh, what is it, yellow cypress? Lemon yellow cypress. cypress. Oh Lemon gosh. cypress. All right, well, are we gonna cheers? Yeah, yeah, okay. how do you, do you just do cheers? I mean, I'm do holding like, with both hands because I'm terrified yeah, of say, dropping uh, this thing. Uh, uh, salute, I don't know, okay, cheers. that sounds good. Yeah, we don't care. Cheers. You're just like, I wanna drink it. Oh, I wanna drink Ooh. Dang. Oh my god, does this, this is good so good. Does this look good on camera? I bet it does. Mm. When, you so, drink it, mm. when you drink it like that, Tell me should, about the next you should call the drink the creeper. Because <laughs> you are totally looking at her through the, the bush. creeper. <laughs> yeah. You run now an agency. When I, I took a look at it, there's so many different things that you do in yeah. the agency. It's not just uh, not just print work. It looks like there's digital work. There's like sort of marketing, full marketing agency type of thing. Is I that? Mean, it's a lot going on. So yeah. I, I'll try to explain it a little bit. So. I think in the sense of being a creative person and dipping my hands in so many things or wanting to try so many things, I am trying to sort of lift the communities that I'm around all the time in Portland. So we're talking like mostly creatives of color, queer folks and yeah, yeah. women, and um, kind of trying to adhere like a social justice framework to what I'm doing. Oh. So it's kind of like being tapped into this really amazing creative community and like trying to use my platform, especially as like a non-black person of color to lift these, these, yeah, these yeah, folks, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. um, it's everything's done with a lot of intention. Even me making content that is actually just the people, like it is just our story, it is just our yeah. lives, and maybe it's actually not really that special in the context of the world, but, but we're, I, we don't I, see it. I, I know, I don't need it to be for the context of the world right. necessarily. Yeah, yeah and so, sure. You know, just even recently, I got to speak at PSU, um, which is Portland State University, yeah. for the graphic design students. They invited me to come do a thing called a show and tell. Yeah. And um, I spoke, and I just, you know, I've never done a presentation before. I don't know how many slides equals 45 minutes. I'm like <laughs> guessing. I like stayed up until two in the morning making this keynote presentation. Then I found out that you can do animations. Then was like setting everything on fire. You know, like it was just kind of a mess, but kind of like cute in its own way. And so I go to do this presentation. And the room is pretty full. There's probably like 75 people there. And I finished talking, and I think that I did a pretty good job of engaging folks. And I yeah. kind of wish I was a little bit ner less nervous because I think it could have been even funnier. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, it's kind of But they're like rooting for you no matter yeah, what. Totally. Like you get up there, yeah. Yeah, and so then at the very end, I have a couple people waiting in line to talk to me. And there's this amazing kid. And he's like, you know, I live in Seattle. I've been in Portland for two months trying to find a place to live and find work. But I do like tech stuff. And I really want to move into a more creative vibe. And so yeah. I came here today actually because your name on the flyer for this event is in Thai and I'm Thai. And he's like, I came here because it's like, I, I came and saw you talk and I've never seen or heard That's a Thai person really talking beautiful. about being a creative person before. Yeah. yeah. So I could completely resonate with that kid, right? Yeah. And then right afterwards, I did um, a little like hangout with the. Um, Comma Kids, which is the BIPOC graphic designer kids in Portland. Uh, in Portland University. as well, yeah, yeah. yeah. In P at, P at PSU specifically. Okay. And because I talked about being a first-generation American kid, yeah. um, they all wanted to talk about that experience. And 
almost like everybody's kind of talking at me because everybody is just so excited that there's mm -hmm. like this person that is talking about something that resonates with them. And they even said like most of the time when we come to these show and tells, like they rarely ever have a person on this that's brown or black either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. I think out of that one speaking engagement, it definitely made me feel like my words mean something, taking up that space means something and is yeah. important. Yeah. And I feel like way less nervous about doing stuff like this now because I just know that someone's gonna see this. Oh, absolutely, yeah, for really sure. And really be able to connect with what it is that I'm doing and what yeah. I'm saying. So that feels really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, you know, I can produce events. Um, I've actually been getting hired a lot by local nonprofits and like, uh, to kind of make their parties a little bit more exciting, <laughs> because who's like, been to like a nonprofit like, gala or I auction? Know, like, or you know, <laughs> it's like. But actually, I did one on Wednesday night yeah. uh, for the Women's Foundation of Oregon, and they hired me to do this amazing, like, sort of olive, bran olive branch uh, event because they hadn't done one in a couple years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, we had a self care station, we had tarot card reading, we had a chair massage, we had DJs, we had bands, we had a professional, like, headshot pop up station. Because I'm like, everybody gets those photos at parties where it's like uh, yeah, a fuzzy totally mustache, agree. and like, what are you going to do with that photo after? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and so yeah, I'm like, yeah. All these women are gonna come to this event. Let's get them a photo they can use on their LinkedIn or yeah, whatever, social right? Media, social wherever media, it's at. right? So yeah, for sure. Actually, taking something back with you. Yeah. And we even offered uh, free childcare too. In the 15 years that I've lived in Portland, I had not really been in a room where there was like 60-year-old white ladies and like 23-year-old non-binary black femmes hanging yeah. out in a space where it didn't feel weird. <laughs> everybody was just chilling and having I the best time, that. right? Yeah. We're raising money for a really good cause. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of what I try to do in in everything that that that, yeah. I, that I curate. And I, I I love curation also. Yeah. So I'm always trying to be really intentful, like you know, with what I'm doing. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So it's music videos, it's photo shoots, it's events. Everything you're doing, did you just tack on different things, like as as they became necessary, or like somebody offered you, like, hey, I know you only do this, but could you do this creative thing for us as well? And then you would do it. Or are they things that you loved, and then you just pitch yourself? And get out it, to the. It's the, just the basically market. like me knowing people that need stuff. Like I, I can see, I can see my friends working at whatever it is that they're doing, yeah. and seeing that they don't have access or money or the privilege to be able to make things for themselves. And then out of that, then comes like the talent management side. And so it's not necessarily like models and actors and this kind of thing, but it is like crew. It's videographers, it's mm -hmm. DPs, it's gaffers, it's grip, yeah. it's um, art directors, so it's do you creative have, directors. Do you have a crew that, I mean, I guess you don't necessarily, you hire them out. They're not like beholden and you're like, oh, no, 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 yeah. let me hire them out to the masses in yeah. the Northwest. Yeah. Um, but do people come to you for that type of, like, hey, I'm looking for a gaffer. Hey, I'm looking for well, somebody. Well, that's the idea. You, so yeah. this is what's happening. So in Portland right now, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, DEI yeah. is very, like, trending. Yeah. Everybody wants to now be like, okay, I want to make my workforce a little bit more diverse and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so this is what's going to happen. So people are doing DEI work now. By the way, I love the way you just said that, which is even better. Yeah. Like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Not like, here's the plan or here's the idea. No, no, no. Or here's no. This like, is ha it's happening. No, 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 no. This is what's happening. This is what's going to happen. This is going to happen. Yeah. I'll preface this with the fact that most of my life, I've basically felt like I've been living in the future. Yeah. Like, I'm constantly like, I'm not here right now. I'm not even here right now. Oh. <laughs> Just that weird, huh? <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, what's happening right now? <laughs> I'm not even here uh, right I'm now. I'm not here right now. You keep drinking that. Yeah, You're I'm going to drink yeah. this. Everybody now is going to sign up for their DI consultation. They're going to try to be more aware all this thing is going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, maybe in the next year, two or three, people then, that information hopefully will actually start seeping in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And people will actually start unpacking their and start figuring things out and how to make their communities yeah. better and support communities of color and, you know, all these things. So yeah. it, once that happens, they're going to be like, huh, where are all the creatives of color that are the DPs and the editors and the makeup yeah, artists yeah, yeah, and the yeah. stylists and the prop people, right? Where where are they? Where, like, okay, now that we're supposed to hire these people, where are they? Yeah. And I'd be like, they're right here. It's right here. <laughs> they're right here. So my idea is that I'll charge like a 20% agency fee just like any other, yeah. right? Handling the contract, scheduling, doing oh, all the things, amazing. right? That's amazing. But here's the, the radical part. So when I was doing research for writing that grant to make that film, I like realized, oh, uh, Asian women make 70 cents on the dollar. But I thought a really good idea for the for the talent management side would be then if you wanted to hire that person, that I would tack on that percentage as an extra fee to kind of make that uh, pay gap more oh. equitable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. that client showing up as an ally and actually putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. And actually. That is a radical part participating in it Absolutely. in this other way. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of this sort of like 
future thinking, kind of like trying to think like, how can I build this community? Like, what does it look like if you signed on to be a part of my agency and I got you know your rights training, maybe a self-defense class, you know, maybe some radical financial literacy. Then you have, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. a lot of us kind of pitching in and like kind of putting our best foot forward and yeah. saying, we want to lead with best practices. We want to be intentional. We yeah. want to be thoughtful and we want to be authentic about what it is that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't have to worry about my work not being great because it's going to be great regardless because well, it, it sounds, can't, yeah. it can't not be because yeah. of all the different lenses that are a part of making it. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of writers, a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, um, they, they all say the same thing. Um, when somebody asks them, hey, how can I do what you do, yeah. right? How can I become a writer? How can I become, and a lot of times they'll say, it, it, it's like they're selling the negative. Yeah. They'll say, if you can do anything else, yeah. do it. Yeah. Because this is not easy. Yeah, it's I, not easy. And I know that, you know, I, yeah, I struggle, it's up and down. You know, there yeah. was like a moment where, you know, I had a friend kind of give me some tough love and give me, you know, and I was like, I actually, you know, I did start crying because it was hard to hear. It was Ooh. like, you know, she was just like, your cart's a little bit in front of your horse. You know, you're making all this really beautiful content. You're making these music videos and you're doing all this stuff. Right. But like, you don't even really have a solidified mission statement written. Yeah. Right? Like, you don't really have X, Y, Z, these things that you kind of need as like the foundation, mm -hmm. right? And so I feel I feel like maybe I got it out of my system a little bit last year. Yeah. Um, and then this year, like I said, will be much, much more business forward. Yeah. I'm hoping that it doesn't stay like that forever. I'm hoping that I find like a radical business person that loves negotiating <laughs> and writing contracts. You know, I, I hope I find that person. You're like, welcome I don't aboard. Do it. You don't. <laughs> I just don't want to do it, but I have to do it. And obviously, it's better if I learn how to do those things yeah. too, right? Like, yeah. it'll just be a puzzle piece until yeah. I figure it out. But I definitely feel like I absolutely 100% know that it's like completely valid for me to take up that space, especially yeah. in Portland. Yeah. I just know that I'm on the verge of something that can be really impactful and really yeah. amazing and like really community driven. And it's like, if I can smash all of those worlds together, yeah. right, the creative stuff and also like the social justice work part of it, like in the community organizing, I couldn't have asked for a better job. I basically am just trying to create my own magical job because no one will hire, no me, will hire me to, to do, do that this job, job right? <laughs> so I have to make my own job. I mean, that's really what it comes well, down to. Well, it sounds like you've been able to mash a lot of that up and it's just seeing like where it goes and how it grows. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Thank you All so right. much. Cheers. Let's cheers again. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Fran, thank you for being on the show. Uh, I love everything we were talking about. I especially love the type of work that you're doing and who you're doing it for um, struck a chord with me. If you want to see more stuff like this, then uh, ring the bell, subscribe, click the buttons. And if you have your own f up or story or recovery that you want to talk about, go to fups.com. We would love to have you on the show.